All right, so last time we were talking about quantum theory. And uh, why don't we actually review some of the stuff that we had talked about last time before I actually start talking further about Pauli's exclusion principle. So let me ask you a question here, a few questions here about the stuff that we covered last time. And again, think about these questions yourself first. And then I'm going to ask you to talk to the person next to you. And then I'll poll the class. The goal of this course is to really teach students some effective problem solving strategies and also to help them develop some logical thinking skills. And of course, that has to be done in the context of teaching them some physics concepts. D? E? OK, it looks like that most people remember it correctly that the angular momentum can only take certain discrete values, right? Once she introduces a, a certain topic, she'll talk about it for a little while, give us a bunch of equations on the board for our personal notes. And then she'll you know, pose a question to the whole class. She'll ask everybody to talk to each other, the neighbors, the people that are sitting around them, their friends or whatever. And then uh, she'll take a poll of the whole class to see you know, if people are actually understanding the concept. If people aren't really getting it, she'll continue to talk about it and do it again until she understands that most of the people get what she's talking about. OK, it seems like that some people think that C is the right answer, and some people think that D is the right answer. The correct answer here is C. I strongly believe that students have to be actively engaged in the learning process. They have to always keep monitoring their own learning. And I think that it's especially important in physics for students to be asked questions all the time, you know, so that they actually know what they are really understanding. So this is the target material from which x-rays are going to be emitted. Now what really does happen? What do you think will happen if I have a very, very high voltage? And notice that there is this filament here and there's vacuum. In between here in this region, there's just vacuum. If you close this circuit, as soon as you close the switch, what do you expect will happen? And I also believe that students can learn a lot by talking right. to each other. Because when students are talking to each other, it gives, gives them an opportunity to, first of all, organize their own thoughts. Because when you have to you know, articulate your thoughts, you better actually be clear about what you want to say to other people you know, in order to make it understandable to them. That's one of the main reasons why I like this class, especially since it's two hours. You don't get, like, she makes it hard for you to fall asleep by getting you involved in it and by her moving around. And that's one of the reasons why I like the class. She also puts more emphasis on the concepts in physics instead of making it more of a plug and chug course where you basically have to memorize all the equations and know what each variable stands for. It's not so much about that in this class. It's about, you know, how, how did these equations come about and, you know, if some variable changes, how does it affect something else? You can only stretch students knowledge a little bit beyond what they already know. And so the thing is, we have to always be very aware of where the students are at a particular time on an average so that we can actually target our instruction just a little bit above that and then a little bit above that, a little bit above that. It is particularly important that we keep in mind what students already know and how we can stretch their knowledge and make them come to exactly where we want them to be at the end of the course. You must have a higher frequency, which means it must have a higher energy. Higher energy. energy, right? Does that make sense to everybody? Because energy is Planck's constant times the frequency. Focus should be on learning by students, not on really teaching by instructors. You know, like it always has to be, how can I maximize the learning?